that these evil spirits would come alive at night for the relief, would come and possess them. So they would give them gifts to the people who would knock on the door with the scary costumes. To the point they would make sacrifices of the animals, they would make sacrifices of human beings at that time out of ignorance in some remote places, some remote cases. So that is how Halloween started. It is rooted in paganism, in idol worship, in the beliefs that is encouraged by shaitan. And then later on when the Roman Empire conquered Ireland and Scotland and England, when the Romans came over there, the Romans were celebrating a festival of harvest, what they call as Cremona, in honor of the goddess of fruits, the trees that give those fruits. So they would celebrate that festival. Then they saw these people on October 31st celebrating Halloween. They said that let's combine this festival of Pomona with Halloween. And I'll tell you where the name of Halloween came from. So this was going on in Ireland and the surrounding areas in Scotland and Wales and parts of England that penetrated. And then when the Christianity came in the year 731 of the Christian era, at that time, the Pope realized that some of the Christians are leaving the religion of Christianity and going into this paganism, the worship of the idols, what the pagans at that time were doing. So the Pope decided we had to do something to attract the people back to Christianity and also the newly converts to Christianity. So at that time, the Christians were having a festival called All Saints Day on May the 13th. So the Pope decided, let's move this the festival of All Saints Day, honoring the saints who had died. Let's move this festival of All Saints Day from May 13th to November 1st, which was known in the Christian language they were calling at that time as Hallowmas. So Hallowmas was moved from May 13th to November 1st, and the night before November 1st, the night before Hallowmas was known as, or the evening before Hallowmas was known as Halloween, and that's from where the term Halloween came from. And later on, as the generations went by, and this festival of Halloween became very brutal and vicious in the sense of uh, people were worshipping shaitan, satan, devil worshippers came into existence, the, the groups of occult, people following these cults came into existence. And the Pope of that time later on, and the devout Christians became very worried about what's going on. This is not something the Bible encourages or the Christianity encourages. So the Pope of the later days said in the 18th century, he said, you're not going to celebrate Halloween anymore. Because even though everything what they're doing is not right, but the effects of this are true, he said. And that's what many, even the Muslim scholars mentioned this thing too. The effects of imitating the spirits, the evil spirits, and wearing those gaulish costumes, imitating de de the devils and the, and the satans, and all those things, the witches and, and, and warlocks, you know, was having the effect on the people who were doing this. And this was taking people to the extreme measures. Even today, the Pope wants to ban Halloween because the effects it's causing on the children of the parents. Many of the children, the phone lines are lit up on the night of Halloween. Parents concerned that the children are going to enter some cults or enter into occult beliefs of this devil worship and Satan worship. And the people who worship devil in the city of San Francisco and many other cities and parts, it's like the night of Eid for them. It's like the night of celebration for them. Wearing those devilish costumes, 
living a bonfire, dancing around the fire with those devilish costumes. All those things. The devout Christians, subhanAllah, the devout Christians who, said we have, who say we have got nothing to do with Halloween. This is something that takes us away and our children away from the faith of Christianity. We don't want to celebrate Halloween because of its adverse effects on our children and on our belief and faith. The devout Christians today even, they go to schools, talk to the principal and the teachers, look, we got nothing to do with Halloween. We do not celebrate Halloween. We do not want our kids to celebrate Halloween. And the people, the principal, the teachers understand and respect that. We as Muslims also need to understand where this Halloween is coming from. It is not just some cultural thing. It is based, its roots are based on paganism, on idol worship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has strictly forbidden, forbidden, for, has, has forbidden us from idol worship. Ibrahim alayhi salam makes a dua Allah puts in the Quran. Oh Allah, save my children and progeny from the worship of idols. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us a surah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that whoever recites surah, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهُ الْكَافِرُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ The entire short surah. Whoever recites this surah in the night, every night before they go to sleep, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save them from shirk, from associating partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all among those. Respected listeners, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a beautiful way of life, of Islam. He is clean. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has removed everything that is innovation, everything that is false. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam removed it from its roots, from its base. When Prophet came to Medina after doing Hijrah, he saw people celebrating a day in Medina. The Prophet of Allah asked, what are they celebrating? The people of Medina said, oh Prophet of Allah, they're celebrating a sports holiday. They have this every year, and this is a holiday for them in, in, in honor of the sports. They play this, this day in Medina. Prophet could have said, well, it is only a sports holiday. Continue with it, there is nothing wrong. But Prophet wanted to remove everything that takes a person away and bring and makes him or her follow some innovations. Prophet at that time said, We have only two celebrations, Eid al Adha and Eid al Fitr. These are the two celebrations we have, Prophet said. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, Walladina la yashaduna zoom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, When people, the Mufassireen, the Abbas, the Allahumma, and Mujahid, the the Tabi'i, the famous Tabi, have written in the explanation of these words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the events like Halloween. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, when a person passes through an event like Halloween, or any of these kinds of celebrations. What do Muslim believers do? They walk away with respect and dignity. They do not participate in that. Because if we do participate respected listeners, either there are two things, either we are part of a problem or we are part of a solution. Even if people are knocking on our doors, we say, all right, we are not celebrating Halloween, but let's give these kids to our neighbors, kids who are coming and knocking on our doors. Even though you're giving just the, the kid, giving them the sweets and candies and not participating in Halloween, but you still are participating in Halloween. Because you've become part of the Halloween. So what do we do? We have to remember respected listeners. The nights, Hassan Basri, Rahmatullah, say, the winter nights which we're going through now, which have started, 
Winter night is a blessing for a believer. The nights are long, he devotes, he or she devotes his time in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The days are short, they devote their days in fasting, because the fasting becomes easy, the days are short in the winter. If you look at the night, the night is the most precious time in the life of a believer. Prophet ﷺ was given the prophethood. He was given the seal of the prophethood in the night time. It wasn't the daytime. The Quran was revealed in the night time. When he was hurt, blood was flowing to his body and feet in thighs. Allah Azzawajal called him after a few days to, to, to ascend the heavens and about the heavens, to come close to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Subhanallahi asra bi abdihi ghinna min al masjid al haram ila al masjid al aqsa. Subhanallahi asra bi abdihi laylam. In the night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the heavens and beyond. Now in the daytime, if you look at our five times salat, majority of the five times salat, three salats, Maghrib, Isha, Fajr, and the most important salat after the Faraid, Tahajjud, they're all in the nighttime. Taraweeh, Allah encourages us to read in the night time. When the sons of Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam came, repenting, realizing what they had done to the younger brother, after many years when Yusuf alayhi salam had grown up, when they realized and they came to their father remorseful, sorrowful and repenting, he said, oh, oh, oh our dad, beloved dad, dad, seek forgiveness for us. He didn't raise his hands, it was the daytime when they came. He said, come to me in the night time. I will pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Because the night time is the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's throne comes closest to the earth. And he says, if anyone among you is there who wants his wishes and desires to be fulfilled, I'm here to answer his call. Is there anyone who is seeking repentance? I'm here to forgive him or her. The night time is a very precious time for a believer. But in that night time, respected listeners, Allah says in the Quran, when we have given them, them the truth, we have sent down the truth to them, yet they practice falsehood. Yet they practice falsehood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, beware, beware of what your prophet has told you, lest you're afflicted with some trial or a grievous punishment befalls upon you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us respective listeners. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our children. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us follow the straight path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from all kinds of innovations. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us stand up for the truth. You know, when we, we, what do we do on the night of Halloween? We talk to our neighbors, we educate them, we let them know, listen. Invite to the way of your Lord in a nice way. With the best of the arguments is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We tell them nicely, look, we do not celebrate Halloween because this is where it's coming from. The rooms, the basis of the Halloween. Even the Pope today, Pope Francis, he wants to ban Halloween. And he wants to ban Halloween and bring Holy Green. Meaning he wants to bring, he wants the children to dress as just saints, to make it all saints day for them again. And he knows, and one of the one of the famous what they call his father or the priest has said that Halloween, Halloween is not just some fun, but it opens up the door for dangerous things. This is a quote from a famous Christian priest of our present day time. If you look at daily, if you read Daily Mirror or The Guardian, or you Google up about the evil effects of Halloween, coming from the Christians and the Christian faith, you will realize how evil this celebration is and the effects it has on our children and on our faith and on our way of life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all. Rabbana la tuzi qulubana ba'da ithaykana wa hablana min labanka rahma. Inna ka anta al-wahab. Rabbana adina fi dunya hasnata wa fi akhira bi hasnata wa fi na'adab al-nar. Ibad Allah. Inna Allah ya'amur bil adi wal ihsan. Wa ita'idhi al-qurba. Wa ina'ni bahshari wal-muhtari wal-dhari. 